Mud is a player who I was skeptical about coming into the tournament, but has already proved me wrong. He had a fantastic game one. Yep, 100%. And even in the game five of their qualification series over Supermassive, Jace Oof. being a uh, monster performance. Now, we've seen one answer be successful into the Renekton. It was a curious one in the uh, Cleanse Quinn. We're going to see it again. Chances? Was it a successful answer into the Renekton? Was that what that... What that... I... <laughs> Mm, it was, it was, yeah, it won. It won it against won. a Renekton. Yes. And in that sense, successful. All right, well, Nico is now going to be the lock-in. Yeah. Bob with the Thresh wouldn't be mine. I, I enjoyed the Thresh that we saw previously. And of mm -hmm. course, for Goku, the Nico had a couple of really fantastic sort of outplay moments. Yeah. Uh, certainly could just go back to basics, exactly what you could, you expect to hear the crowd cheering once again, comfortable champions for these guys. And especially I like the Thresh lock-in for Lucy on the bottom side. Flamengo, they like to play around the bottom lane. You can just land in your jungler in, look to get very aggressive early and make these things happen. Of course, it's going to be matched by a very stock standard lane on the other side of the coin. And I think Kaisa Nautilus just so good. Scales very well into the mid to late game. Nautilus with a ton of CC in the kit. Also, a pretty solid amount of kill pressure when you look at the lane overall and the ability to proc the plasma stacks. But now, the Lee Sin coming in for Shrimp. And the Rek'Sai was already a little aggressive. You know, the Hail of Blades coming out. But even more aggression now on this Lee Sin. Even more expectations to keep our eyes on that early game. Yeah, 100%. Pairs well in terms of a roaming duo. I mentioned, like, you can Lantern the jungler in, but if you can get space to roam around as a Lee Sin and Thresh combination, Lucian Shrimp linking up could be incredibly potent in this one and like to see what they go towards. Of course, it is going to be a little bit of the mismatch. No jungler locked in for Royal Youth, so you expect to see some of them hit the deck there for Flamengo. Is it going to be the Rex size, one of those age-old matchups? Of course, actually banned away already where you can cancel the knockback, so the pool is a little bit dwindling, at least going to be the first one. Of course, the mismatch on the opposite side, though, is the AD carry. So the Zaya is going to get taken off the board. BRTT frequently going back to the Ezreal in situations like this, but we've seen his Lucian as well. We've seen picks like the Caitlyn coming out in this tournament, too. So I want to see kind of what his champion pool looks like when the two priority picks are already gone in the Kai'Sa and the Zaya. But the J4 will be the final ban taken away here from closer, limiting some of those proactive playmakers. Yeah, one of his most played champions in the domestic season, 11 games over the course of that one, so... Makes a lot of sense to ban that one away. And now Flamingo have some choices to make. I would expect it's going to be the AD carry lock-in. You already see the Kaisa. Lucian would make a lot of sense, of course, with that LeBlanc ban being the last one from Royal Youth. They do split the post. Whoa. That is okay! <laughs> if you are not a fan of the CB Law, you are about to witness greatness. BRTT is a legend. The Draven Axes are tattooed on his arm, and for damn good reason. This man is a domestic monster. The Brazilian double lift, and you hear the fans going wild yeah. for it. Stone Cold Killer as well. The expression on his face just did not change. The crowd erupts as he locks that one in, and a huge punish lane into the Kaiser. I like the cheeky Blitzcrank cover. Not gonna happen this time. Could I? Um, and, well, okay, so why we don't talk about hover overs? I'm sorry, I've broken the cardinal rule of casting. I actually really like Blitzcrank into Thresh. Controversial opinion, like completely personally. It's such a good time. Your hook travels quicker, he throws it out. That's a fine matchup. The card of this though, the okay. lock in now for closer in the jungle. And a lot of, honestly, solid uh, mid to late scaling with the Karthus yes. and the Azir on this team. Renekton nice to balance out the early game too. So how exactly do Flamenco respond? What would their final pick be? Yeah, that is kind of the scary choice there. Scaling versus early game aggression. Gonna be the last lock in. Nico can be flexed between the two roles. Throwing it up into the Renekton topside. You have range to deal with him. That makes sense. And that is gonna be the case. And a very terrifying prospect if you're on the opposite side for Royal Youth. The Zoe starts to get rolling here. The pick potential between the Thresh, the Zoe, the Nico, even the Lee Sin is, is monumental. But on the opposite coin, if you get behind, you are yeah. never coming back against a Karthus. Yeah, incredibly difficult. And interestingly already, this is now two completely different styles we've seen from Royal Youth. We mentioned it, like the Karthus, the Azir, Kaisa late game will absolutely be in their hands. But uh, getting there is going to be difficult compared to what they did in the damn one series. Attack the bottom lane early and uh, look to play that way because it was a weak point. But for Flamengo here, they like to play down the bottom side around the BRTT, the Draven that he has locked in. And Royal Youth, they sit back. They're like, okay, Kaisa not very standard. We're good at these champions. Let's let them be and scale up towards the late game. We have to see BRTT. I think inevitably a lot of eyes on this Draven. You're always mm. waiting for that cash out. You're waiting for that first kill or first death. Is costing those stacks can be catastrophic for a Draven lane. But really across the map, outside of mid lane, 
We have some potentially very explosive matchups. Yeah. If Robo missteps here up against the likes of Armlet's Renekton, mm -hmm. could find himself never coming back into this game. Yeah. Certainly, certainly couldn't. I think the big one to watch is going to be the jungle matchup, right? Like these lanes can be volatile, but Lee Sin into Karthus, lots of room to play with here for Shrimp and a lot of pressure on his shoulders, I think. In terms of tools that he has available, there is a ton and early game impact certainly has to make it if they are able to scrounge out any sort of lead heading into this ultimately incredibly important game here for both sides. Royal Youth versus Flamenco Esports, both 0-1 against Dan Juan, need to find wins against each other to make it out of groups, to move to the best of fives and potentially the world group stage. If you had any doubt as to who is the crowd favorite today, Probably time to cast it aside. It's yeah. very clearly Flamingo. You would be very stupid. But that's okay. That's no. okay. Five man stack. Okay. They do have a Nautilus on the other side, so maybe expecting any sort of invade. Karthus, of course, in this sort of matchup, wants space to play with. So an invade to try and split the map could be a useful play in Flamingo there with the answer. Not going to spend too much time. And now Goku shepherding in the bottom side of the map. You can see a lot of caution now. They're not entirely sure where the enemy team is. So while they have protected Shrimp's early pathing, they're not really entirely sure where the Karthus is going. Luckily for them, Closer is not on the bottom side. Mm -hmm. They're going to push in for a little bit of vision here. And as you mentioned, all eyes on the junglers here in the early game. Yes, there's kill potential in the lanes, but until something happens, you kind of got to wait to see it to believe it. So where is Closer and Shrimp going to go in the first few minutes of this game? But it looks like we have a lane swap coming out. Renekton yeah. now stepping into the mid lane. Azir is going to the top side of the map. I believe we've seen this bef uh, before mm -hmm. in the TCL. Willing to put that Azir top lane and just let him kind of farm up and sit back. Yeah, just chill. Uh, in terms of the Renekton versus the Nico, could be rough to deal with, especially like early spiking items. Very cheap there on Robo's side. And range advantage does just get matched by the Azir. In terms of mid lane, like Renekton is no stranger to the matchup. So does make a lot of sense here for Royal Youth. Uh... Something interesting, you did see the ward placed on the blue buff of Flamingo on the bottom side. BRTT and Lucy just kind of sitting around uh, somewhat to make sure that they don't lose that one. They, of course, did not see the Karthus at all. Five man plays at level one do sort of cost you the ability to protect all sides of the map. You stack up in one uh, point on Summoner's Rift and you lose control of the rest. So just kind of trying to lock down the bottom side of the map because they have to try and play through it. Here. Both level two is now coming through. In the mid lane as well, Goku kind of playing with fire here. Have to be very careful, very respectful. You saw level one, not really scared of the next one whatsoever. Makes a ton of sense. Even with the press the attack, just cannot get close enough. But here, level two on out. Yeah. Renekton just becomes a bigger and bigger threat. One mispossession could just kill Goku outright. And he has the heal. That is the good news. He is somewhat equipped for this matchup. Yep. That is true. Certainly true. You can see already as... Uh, ooh. Bubble's going to land. Ooh. Armut doesn't have a point in Q, so heal not available until right now. Hits that level three mark where... His uh, burst potential, his kill threat does skyrocket, but that was a super good trade there from Goku, and, and see I, Shrimp immediately just crosses the mid lane. And I love it, because that was probably the opportunity for Renekton, knowing that Zoe's cooldowns still aren't there on the Sleepy Trump level, to move in to try to trade back on that massively powerful level 3, but seeing Lee Sin instantly stops that in his tracks, makes sure Zoe can push out that lane, and lets him spot out the Karthus too. That's it, Karthus farming fine, doubling yeah. Lee Sin's farm right now, speed clearing the jungle as expected, and until Shrimp really gets something done, the Karthus will remain, uh, on paper, the stronger pick. Yeah, 100%. He's entirely cleared every single camp on his side of the map, of course, doesn't go for the Scuttle Crab, but Shrimp just on the one side, took a look at mid lane, and was just a reset from closer down on the bottom side of the map. Maybe thinking about a gank attempt, they don't know where the Lee Sin is, they saw him cross mid lane, and just trying to dissuade any sort of early pressure as you can expect a Draven Geyser matchup that can go one way and one way very very fast so safe play is exactly what you see first hook feels like it's going to be huge now Arma moving up to the top side was spotted out by the ward so it does give free license for Goku to push in the mid lane here and the awkward thing about the Renekton back is it seems like Arma had just enough money to pick up the longsword has no pots for the lane so any bad trades any negative trades yeah. are just going to remain stacked against him in this lane phase the one thing he does have is being a mid lane, you have access to either side of the river. The melons are super nice. Gonna heal you up, but uh, that's gonna be a few and far between in this sort of situation. So 
Yeah, as you mentioned, certainly going to have to be careful on this one. Very nice vision control from both of the mid laners right now. You can see Deep Ward placed up top at the Golem camp. Azir top lane, very, very gankable if you land the snare in Robo's hands, and that's an incredibly easy cleanup. And the same side of the coin, Goku walks bot. They have their deep ward that did just get pinked, so everybody looking for the junglers because that's going to be the fulcrum with which this game splits. And the good news is he has the bottom side ward, and Adstrem takes to the top side, so good setup, smart thinking ahead of that is BRTT. Pitches for a few more stacks in this laning phase. Arma, though, a lot less scared. Zoe getting stronger and stronger, much easier for her to clear the wave as more levels come through. Good trade from Robo. But, uh, of course, the kill pressure remains very much the same. In a very slow first five minutes. Infernal Dragon going to be the first one to spawn. So maybe post level six, post ten minutes, that starts to speed things up. But Flamingo potentially looking for an opportunity up here. Zero Shrimp, mana. Shrimp's been spotted, though. Remember, True. the ward on the Krugs, there's just... You have to wonder. If he dies to this, now the turn, though. Robo sidestepping. Dude. Throws out the stair. Not going to connect. Closer there to make sure nothing else happens. It's all out of mana, and the wave is yeah. dead even. And that's the problem, right? Karthus does so much damage on isolated targets. How did that hit? And it goes back. Pilot's now going to be in trouble. BRTG is going to take the lantern in. They've got their nice eyes set on Pilot. He can't get it. Tolerant. Stopping the Draven in his tracks. If BRTT found that kill, this lane would have been over. Yeah, both of these supports coming up clutch aggressively from Lucy. We've seen so many skill shots just snuck through the minion wave. This world's already in a huge opportunity. Summoners is going to be the cost there from Pilot and the reset. So in a lane that was already trending in this direction, matchup dictates that BRTT should have control. 10 CS, 15 is the advantage right now, but they're going to take, take the tempo base. They want to get the reset off. That does mean the Tolerant holds some of the way, but advantage definitely towards Flamingo's side of the map. A lot of money in the back pocket of BRTT. You can see it. When he gets back here, the immediate BF sword pickup. See what else he wants to buy. Maybe he's gonna sit and wait. Goes for doesn't even need boots. <laughs> Goes for the extra longsword. This yep. man wants the bloodthirster. He is not settling for anything less as a first item. Mm -hmm. And also Moby's instant buy. You can see the differing decisions there from both of these support players. Tolerant. It's gonna have to weather the storm of the Draven Thresh lane, whereas Lucy has some time and some space to play with straight up Moby's buy and immediately links up with his jungler and shrimp. He can get active on the map. He can gank the mid lane. If the Renekton can't play up in the wave, it's very difficult for him to do anything. So uh, this could spill over elsewhere, but okay. Q in the head. Uh, closer there to deny the play. A good bit of damage laid down, but obviously no real fall up, no CC there without the Nautilus in position. And as good as things look to be going on the bottom side of the map for Flamingo, things are a little bit difficult for the Nico on the top yep. side. Was expecting a more favorable matchup up against the Renekton, the range helping her farm safely, but up against the Azir, you can see a 20 CS discrepancy. Yeah. And once again, Robo struggling here in his first day of games. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the thing, right? Like, Royal have slowed down this early game a ton. All they've lost is that heal and flash on pilot right now, and it really is the pressure on Flamingo. This is the style of game they like to play but they have to make something happen. Infernal Dragon is a big, big objective for them to start up, look to take, look to bring Royal Youth over to fight, but if the game just stagnates in this sort of laning phase, mind you, we're only eight minutes into the game, but if default play like this happens, it certainly does favor the Turkish representative. And the later we get, the scarier the Karthus gets, getting closer and closer to the Runic Echoes. Flat Pen as well will make this game a nightmare. Especially for the likes of BRTT, wants as much health as possible in these fights, and even if he can outplay at a certain point, you're just going to get one shot by Karthus, and then mm -hmm. doesn't matter how good you are at pushing your buttons, he only feels, has to push R. <laughs> feels so bad. Karthus salty. Dark Harvest stacks just do incredible amounts of damage. It's no bueno. And I'm curious to see what the next big move is. Is Shrimp's kind of focused for now on clearing out his jungle as the red respawns, but I'd like to see more proactive vision set up on across the map. For now, all of these control wards, three on the bottom side of the map for Flamingo, but not doing anything with it at yeah. this moment in time. I think they're just torn between two decisions, right? You have to, you feel like you have to defend Robo on the top side. He's already lost a plate, half mana, half HP-ish right there on the top side, and Red Buff did spawn, so Shrimp is like, let me clear my camps, and then let's go back towards the bottom lane. You can see him pathing right now, but that's an engage. Pulling out. Needs to take the lantern back to safety, taking his time, but they put a ward on top of it. BRTT can't click it. That's going to be first blood coming through for the Kai'Sa. Half the stack's instantly gone. A disaster for the Flamingo bottom lane. And they make it just look so easy. Not ulti down, deny everything available. Flamingo, they're actually looking for this one. Closer has, has no, no mana. mana. They could try to fish for this. They need to hit it on the card. If they kill the card this instantly, they may be able to win oh. the fight. The hook does not come through. Armut's here as well. Shrimp needs to get out to safety. Zoe, no priority in the mid lane, means the Royal have total control over the pit for now. Mm -hmm. 
They're just going to back off, though. They yeah. don't want to risk anything. It's not an objective taken. There's just a kill handed over, a little bit of gold, and a little bit of respite there for the bottom lane of Royal. But the window is the big thing. Closer. Oh, it does get slipped. This. Body block is going to be now. Draven. That's it. It's not going to be the kill down, but still comes through. And now they're fishing for the fight. Pilot running for his life. He has no mana left. BRTT on the hunt. Taller in the pit. And Goku going to snipe it away. And why not start the dragon to Flamingo popping off? Yeah, very easy access to the dragon pit. That's going to get cleaned up and exactly what they needed. Gold lead wrestled back. BRTT has to feel good about that one. And Shrimp just going to walk away with the solo. <laughs> and definitely what they needed on the back of what looked like a disastrous play on the bottom yeah. side. Draven starts to fall behind. We talked about it. against the Kaisen Nautilus. You may never get the chance to come back, but there it is. BRTT right back in the game. Gets his boots too. Has the Hourglass now and is going to remain a threat on the bottom side. And it was a very ambitious start. Remember sitting in fog looking for that hook over the wall, but bubble lands. They just have the easy rotate. Armored is just nowhere in this fight. You see top left of your screen and Goku bends it around the dragon, but very nicely played and couldn't have been a better time. Remember what I was saying, like Flamingo have to make it happen right now and then they get ganked. It's like disastrous, lose stacks, we lose tempo, we lose everything. And finding that window back in is just super integral. Do feel like they need to break out of the laning phase though. And now they're going to try, they're moving BRTT to the top side. They do not want Robo in the lane with Seal anymore. And it makes sense, 30 CS discrepancy, not where you want to be. Nasher is now completed for the Azir. But first item is on the way for Robo. Glacial Augment will make some of the fights to come a bit easier yeah. for the Flamingo lineup. Mm -hmm. As he uh, gets towards those item spikes, we'll feel a little bit better. But with Infernal gone, Rift Herald does become the only thing really left to play for on the map. And as such, you mentioned Flip map, flip map is going to be the play. BRTT actually just straight up left alone up here. Nobody in position to respond right now. And Lucy's Flash in. forward, Tolerant now locked up. The entire team is here. The Nautilus kicked back going through. BRTT desperately wants his kill. Tolerant, can he make it out to safety? One more auto, but no, Lucy takes it. <laughs> Good kill, but you need the Draven to get that one. Lucy, no. Now this is going to be started up here, however. Flamingo going to continue on to the Herald. Arma now stepping forward. The Renekton is very strong, but has to be careful. Cannot clean up this entire fight. Goku there to support on the backside with the stolen flash as well in the hands of the Zoe. And just absolutely no buttons to play with to try and even contest this one. Karthus Salty not yet up and available. Azir Seol was looking for a pick in the mid lane. Got a flash out, but now all of the objectives on the map. The Infernal down, Rift Herald in the hands of Flamingo. In terms of an early game composition, everything seems to be on the up and up. Maybe a little slower than we expected, but everything trending in the right direction. And overall, just a very good look for Flamingo. Fake BRTT on the top side of the map. It's secretly Robo. But EJ, when you look historically, in recent years, Turkey has always come out on top of the CB Law. So to see Flamingo and the CB Law find this strong early game lead, to look so coordinated in their play, yes, there are some lane discrepancies when you look at Robo's uh, difference in CS, but overall to be this confident at this point in the game is, is yeah. a good look. And you start to see why for so long Brazilian fans wanted to see Flamingo representing them on yep. the international stage. And that's it, like you hear the crowd run, like fan favorites coming in, everybody wants to see them succeed. Right now, Rift Herald gonna be popped, so they're looking to pressure their advantage for a team that likes to play around the early game. Oh, Robo. Doing just that. Pilots, oom. Now retreating. They know which one is the correct Nico. No mana, though. Massive creep wave, Robo. Can use the ult to get the shield. Pilot just forced back, but there's the card this. Uses the ult, wants to get the shield. Oh, he's gonna he does! <laughs> Clean his play in Metallic, but there, Armand now running for his life. BRT he gets it. He gets the cash in. Money in the bank for the Draven. Gotta see how much he made, but. You can hear the crowd come alive. CB Law fans are going nuts for BRTT. Yeah, exactly what they needed. Now looking to all, almost race against the Rift Herald. Gets bashed into the tower. Plates go into the pocket of the Draven as well. Robo doesn't have TP, so it's a long walk back to the top lane, but still a couple of kills. The gold lead starting to emerge. First brick is going to go the way of the Brazilian representatives as well. And it goes to BRTT. Everything being handed to the start of this roster on his Pocket pick Draven. And now, I mean, you've got to be scared. He's going back. He's buying a Bloodthirster. 
And at this stage, Flamingo feel like they are set up to take total control of the map. It is uh, almost now, it is 3k gold lead and Infernal Drake backing them up. They have the Zoe with Ludens completed, so you have to be so careful about moving into Fog of War. And BRTT is more than enough damage to carry a fight. Oh, and look at this positioning. Karthus is almost around. They know the dive is coming, but channeling ulti for the top lane play. TP's come in, the hook lands, and Flamingo just get out scot free. Azir finally lands at the play, but just a little bit too little, too late. And Flamingo walk away with everything. 320 gold discrepancy in the plates. It was a trade on the top side, so not the grossest advantage we've seen of the day, but still 3,000 gold lead, only 14, 15 minutes into the game. And now the BT completed, the extra pickaxe. Still, of course, has access to the stopwatch as well. And the first tower is going to drop. It doesn't look yeah. like anyone got the local gold there. The RTT, big jump. And you know the best thing about being a, a Draven player? What's that? Is you pick it in Champions like you feel real good about yourself, then you get double Infernal Dragon spawn to start the game. <laughs> You've already got one in your back pocket. The second one is going <laughs> to spawn onto Summoner's Rift with a 3,000 gold lead in their hands. It's uh, certainly exactly what they needed right now and setting up for it. All of the members on your screen looking for the contest. Oh, there it is. This has to be scared. One thing there's always going to be good at. Huge damage coming in! don't even need to kill the card this seal goes down and we spent last game thinking about siege comps are dead normally you think of the zoe the jace but apparently draven ulti is the perfect tool to layer on top of the trouble bubble and this is the thing we talked about getting ahead in the early game and flamingo have done it now and yeah. this is the point where both the draven and also the zoe are terrifying to play against they had the vision set up a single bubble hits it doesn't matter who it hits, they're killing somebody. And they just have so much follow-up, right? Like, if anything connects, it's a hook, it's a drave, an ulti, Nico comes over the top. There's just line skill shots everywhere littered across this roster. And now <laughs> with double Infernal Dragon, it just makes you even more miserable to be on the other side of that coin. And the biggest fear is when they get to group, when they start to set up around major objectives, you're looking at a Glacial Augment Nico. Robo has been somewhat of a non-factor thus far in the game, but when you have that slow to set up for an easy sleep land, to set up for an easy hook. Mm -hmm. Things only get harder and harder for the side of Royal. And no matter how much damage you feel like this card is going to do, it, it's not going to be enough if you die every time a fight starts. Yeah. Certainly is the case. Engage tools, not the most reliable. So Flamingo have some decisions to make in terms of snowballing this one out. But mid turret looks to be actually dead. Redemption's going to get popped. That was just stolen there from the Zoe. Mid lane turret super impactful as a fallback pattern for a Karthus, for an Azir comp, and just has to get conceded right now as Seol is in the bottom side. And Flamingo, gold lead, double Infernal. If they're going to walk around the map just so easily, take this turret, it's going to become a very dark summoner's rift for the time being for Royal Youth. To a certain degree, I feel like the pressure is now on the solo laners of Royal. They pulled the swap off to make sure everyone had the most comfortable match that they could. Seol has a massive mm -hmm. CS advantage. Yeah, huge. But what does it mean? What are they actually going to do with it? Because for now, Flamingo have just been out executing as a team. And uh, Double Infernal means no matter how much that CS advantage feels like it means, stats are still going to air in, in favor of the side of Flamingo. Yeah, and I think the big thing is going to be obviously that Baron spawn. We're two minutes away, got a little bit of uh, play before that point, but in terms of being able to start that one up, they're not the most tanky composition. They're going to have to set that one up very cleanly against the super long range. And a single mistake, we have seen Baron's thrown Robo. at this tournament, but That's okay. Trip now moving in closer, just instantly taking out the Draven on now spots out Pilot. They've seen him in the jungle, and now BRTT is on the hunt. Tolerant is not a threat. He does not have a lantern. Flash. He will not oh. get a chance. Now trying to get it out to safety, the double kill for Shrimp. And you can see the attitude in this roster. Three flashes just straight over the top. They want the kill and they want it immediately. Goku, not even at the play. Top turret, just gonna get wailed on by the Zoe and the fight's still going down here. Trying to get Robo, but that's oh, the wrong no. target tolerant. Robo trying to make it out oh. to safety will go down in the end. Style points for duck, ducking out on the not alt there, but not enough. BRTT now setting his sights. On tier two, Goku gonna take the top tier one and the gold lead just exploding for the side of Flamingo. 5k, nearly 6k now in their favor. Yeah. Shrimp though. Seol doesn't have much mana down here. Sitting on a pink ward, has an opportunity. He can sneak around behind the minions. Lucy's coming as well. Can he find it? Q. Good sidestep. Thresh is coming. Seol has TP. to pull a miracle. Burning the TP just to protect him on this one. Okay. Armut's here as well. They're setting up a tower, but. Meanwhile, Draven's in the mid lane. I mean, good timing. The rest of Flamingo were resetting. That could have cost them so much more if Flamingo were on the map. So yeah, get the TP out for that one. 
Thresh. Posturing very aggressively. I mentioned in the Champions like the doer of the Lee Sin and the Thresh is super scary to deal with. Red buff looks to be the play. On the way, Pink's coming out. Ooh, good Void Seeker will spot out. The buff is already gone. Those are going to do what he can to take this one. Zoe waiting, I think, hoping for the Raptors to die so she could throw out the Trouble Bubble, but will not do so. Yeah, they're kind of annoying like that. <laughs> just get in the way. As we'll take another look at what happened down here, you can see Shrimp and Lucy just in the right place at the right time. They know the dive is coming and the punish is incredibly swift. Draven flanking from the other side, so Royal Youth just don't have disengage options here. Double flash over the wall. Very easy cleanup, and that was a Royal Youth roster being proactive. Azir, Kaisa, they have the Karthus composition, but they were looking for the dive, and Flamingo were ready. And really, things are only going to go from bad to worse at this point in the game, because now second items are starting to come through. You know, you've got everything you need on the Glacial Augment, Nico. You've got Draven with both the IE and the BT. Mm -hmm. Zoe working very quickly towards... Eh, Banshee's Veil? Sure. Something. Whatever she wants, really, at this mm -hmm. point in the game. Goku, very strong. Has options, and now becomes sort of the risky part, right? For Flamingo, the Baron setup is the only thing that could cost them this game from this point, right? Like, you have to throw back this lead. It is uh, relatively large at this point. They have everything they need to set this one up. And the one thing I will note is they don't have reliable engage. The best they've got is a bubble. It's a thresh hook. So Royal will have to be uh, very conscious of that as they do approach, but... Just littering the area with wards, just trying to get this control back. Side lane being dealt with. Armor doesn't have TP, whereas Robo does. So map just entirely controlled right now. Flamingo looking to exert themselves on this one. And I think realistically, really difficult for Royal to do much. Mm. Uh, tolerant, you know, you talk about the lack of engage, reliable engage on the side of Flamingo, but it's a similar story for the side of Royal. Tolerant with the Nile Assault is really the most reliable form they have. The hook potentially, but... If he can't lock up a Zoe or a Draven, then this this fight will pretty yeah. much instantly end in the favor of Flamenco. Really if, want to find a pick here, and they, they just can't. Yeah, and if you think about the four-man unit of Royal Youth that is going to have to face-check this Baron, the Renekton's not going to be there. Tolerant is the tankiest man they have. He's got no stopwatch, 0-2, no stats. And if Flamingo are just straight up starting this one up, you can see so many pings. Royal knows something is happening, but can they get there? Sleepy Trump Bubble will connect. No chance to proc the Aftershock. That means it's going to be big damage onto the Nautilus. Knockback Tolerant now in trouble. The Nasher has gone down, and they're on the hunt. Flamingo pushing in for a bit more. Will they walk away with just the Nasher? Ooh. Oh, oh. Bubble not going to connect. Flamingo will back off for now, but the game is very much in their control. 6K, double Infernal, grab an Ocean just for kicks if you're Shrimp, but just disgustingly large lead. Yeah, just super clean play. Just zero contest on the barrier. They have complete control of the area. And Royal getting starved out of this one. A little bit too late to the play. And unfortunately, very difficult position to find themselves in right now. The reset comes from everybody but Shrimp. Interested to see if he does actually just stay on the map. But he could happily. He's not going to buy any relevant items at this point. He's got a pink ward in his back pocket. Red buff taken from BRTT. This is almost a three item Draven. And the one thing you say is like, okay, he's pickable. He has to stand still. He's not mobile. He has a stopwatch as well. So the AD carry. BRTT just has everything he needs to look to pressure with this Baron buff. Robo now moving onto the bottom side. We'll spot out. It looks like two members of the enemy team won't be able to cancel the back, but now Flamingo know that they are free to push forward and try to pressure this objective. Robo oh. continuing to threaten, throws out the hose. If Closer doesn't land these Skittles, he's going to die, but he does a ton of damage. He's forcing the flash out. Robo still with his flash up and available. Flash oh. time for the rest of the team. Massive damage from the Draven all Arm but now caught in the midst of the team. Lisa's going in. The kick flash back. Shrimp coming through clutch, but Pilot will live in the end. Big damage from the card. This will not be enough to get anything done in that exchange. BRTT though, Oh, that is so 1k damage crits to these minions. Flamingo are just destroying Royal Youth. And Robo on the other side, he didn't get the kill onto Closer. The resets come through, but now TP to the bottom side. They are unrelenting in their pressure. Looking for the pick over the wall. Tolerant, is the hook gonna land? No, Pink Ward drops. BRTT, not afraid to step forward here. Making the most of that Bloodthirster shield. Pressing forward, this could be the final siege. Eyes on the Azir and on the Kai'Sa to try to keep this game alive. The card is good, damage Hooks BRTT on. locked up, but it's not enough. There's the stop, what you talked about, Egypt, but now he's caught out, the combo is there! They're killing everyone, it's an absolute slaughter! Flamingo dominating the competition, Armut is too little too
too late because BRTT is here, the Draven is out, and Flamingo are moving in as they will find their first win in the play-in stage. The crowd in Berlin is alive with the name of Flamingo Esports. And almost a poetic composition to end your day number one. The Draven, all of the resources just funneled into BRTT. You can see the look on Royal Youth's faces right now. It's not the style of game we're used to seeing, and Flamengo just ran away with it. Double Infernal, they had control of everything. Uncontested Baron into a very, very swift end of that game. And it just felt like Royal Youth could not get anything done that game, and you have to wonder, the lane swap looked good. Was the Karthus the right choice in this game? Yeah. They had no ability to be proactive early on, and that the Draven on the bottom side. Yeah. I mean, the thing, the best thing that happened to Royal was that BRTG had so many assists that game. He yeah, had like three he wasn't getting the cash, in. cash out before he actually got one. That's not a best thing to have. That's just really not, that is not the play, and the crowd is just still popping off. Bouncing in front of the stage right now. Flamingo, just a super dominant performance and talking to analysts, talking to people behind the scenes, not the favorites look, even to come into this one. And, and you gotta... They just smack him. Look, we saw frustration on the face of BRTT coming out of that first game. Yep. Just getting disrespected in the fountain has to be infuriating. Mm -hmm. But what a turnaround. Composes himself, comes back, busts out the Draven. Not and only style. is he winning the game, he's winning the hearts of the fans. People losing their minds for BRTT. And it's on the Draven. It couldn't be anything else. Just huge performance there. Yellow kick, styling out of control. In every respect, Flamingo looking dominant in this game. Set themselves up the exact game plan that we've seen from them domestically on the international stage and just looks the goods. And he's even got the SpongeBob shoes on. Man cannot be stopped. I mean, just once again, fantastic game for the side of Flamingo and a crushing loss for Royal Youth. They will have a chance. They can force a tiebreaker. They can look uh -huh. to make it out of this group. But right now for Flamingo, a mixed bag for sure. But losing to Danwon, fine. Beating Turkey, beating the yeah. TCL, beating Royal Youth has to feel so fantastic. 100% mm -hmm. and coming in as the third seed doing it. This is a, a roster paying the price of international performances of the region before coming in, just smacking them in their first chance. Certainly uh, exactly the way they wanted to end their game day here one. And it looked good. And now you have to wonder if the strategy changes because things like the Zoe just seemed to work so fantastically for uh -huh. the team. The coordination was on point. BRTT, we saw him a lot over the course of the last season, uh, put on things like the Ezreal, much more defensive bot lanes. But I really like the way he looks when he's... When yeah, he's when, when he can go training. forwards, <laughs> picking up good. axes, right, clicking heads. That's... Uh, that's just fun. It's a fun way to play. It's a fun way to watch. <laughs> big crits, big money. Laura's standing by with BRTT. <laughs> Take it away. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> that was expected. Congratulations on the first win in the playing stage. How good does it feel to be back? It's been a while since we saw you. Uh, first of all, sorry for my English if I say something wrong. I mean, I'm French, so like, they're used to it. It feels <laughs> like there's no words. Uh, like actually to describe what I'm feeling here. Like because I, I already say sometimes maybe like that's my last word, I don't know. So the much I practice, the much I gave to be here was like so much, so I'm really excited and confident. And they gave you Draven. Were you surprised to see this pick go through in the pick and ban phase? Actually you were like waiting for four or five Draven bands, so it looks like <laughs> <laughs> Looks like they didn't respect, so the Korean team is banning one, two, three. So let's see. Well, good for you then. And you get to end the day on a positive note after the game you had previously. So, what did you think about your performance on this first day in play ins? My or our team? Your team. Um, I think the problem was our first game was like we made a really big mistake that we can't. Like make against like a really good team like that one. We, we just put a wrong ward that didn't see the invading and Robo like pushed the wave, so they froze wave. He lost a lot, so we can't make these mistakes. And I, but overall, I think we played really well. Mm -hmm. um, laning phase, <laughs> laning phase against like Koreans, etc. We had no problem. So. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? 
seeing this, you will have support from the fans no matter what. So is there anything you would like to say to them and the Brazilian fans? Uh, first, I would like to say sorry for the first game. Like, we didn't, uh, we're not expecting like a game, a bad game like that, but uh, they can expect a lot from us for, for the next days. We're gonna like give our blood here for, uh, for like make, make them proud. So yeah, that's all. I hope you will make them proud. In the second day, you will have thank you again for the interview. Thank you. We're gonna take a break and coming back, it's gonna be the last game of the day. Stay tuned.